Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Kyiv Lab podcast featuring Ukrainian innovators. And today we are talking to Vladislav Kreziev, founder and CEO of Lobby X, a human capital platform. Hello. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Hi, Irina. Thanks for invitation. Human capital platform and recruiting agency. We have such a combining format of uh, uh, business to different business models in one, yeah, in one company. Okay, this is great. Uh, can you um, tell us a bit more? What does your company do, and what makes it unique? Well, this is the first thing. Uh, what makes us unique? And this uh, combining two different approaches of hiring people. Uh, employment platform means that. As average, any job uh, portal, you could place a vacancy and uh, collect the responses, applications. We do the same. We have a web platform. Actually, it's a bit old. We're now working on a new one, updating for some innovation features and so on. But uh, of course, we place vacancies on this web platform website. We have uh, almost in each uh, social media our um, profiles and have lots of audience over there. We spread these vacancies in our social media. We have our uh, subscribers for newsletters. Also, we spread vacancies over there. And uh, what else? We have partnership network. This is uh, different communities, about more than 70, 70 different uh, communities, for example, um, graduate communities of different top Ukrainian universities, uh, different educational projects and their graduates, graduates of um, youth organizations such as, for example, ISEC um, and different uh, national patriotic organizations such as PLAST, Foundation of Regional Initiatives. Uh, academy of leadership and so on so on so on so different uh, communities closed ones and also different uh, special communities for very specific um, directions of professions so we spread vacancies over there uh, and um, we collect all the applications we have different other um, digital tools how to spread and target the exact audience to show this ad of vacancy and have them um, response. So this is first component of our business. Of course, we have our internal system of uh, uh, ATS of for candidates. Uh, we have uh, like individual cabinets for each employer to see all of the responses to manage them and so on. What else? And the other thing, it's classical recruiting agency services. We provide recruiting uh, uh, in full circle and uh, we do this for international companies, IT, Ukrainian companies. Uh, latest new type of employers came from uh, military tech because of the full scale war Russia started against Ukraine previous year. So, yeah, of course, a lot of new businesses who produces uh, weapons or some defense um, technologies they started to develop and we help them with uh, engineers, with administration staff and so on. <clears throat> so first unique thing about us that we combine these two different approaches, business models in one company and we enforce, uh, for example, recruiting with our platform and we have internal huge base of candidates uh, from applicants and of course uh, our recruiters source each time pipelines for different vacancies this makes us uh, like bigger and bigger we use digital tools to promote the vacancies and this is first thing another thing we are a social entrepreneurship we help uh, recruit people um, for the progress of ukraine from 2016 and we help free of charge to recruit people to state bodies to reformers who do very important reformer uh, and uh, develop uh, state institutions we help free of charge for NGOs and for independent media we believe that in, in this way we help to develop um, Ukraine and uh, state and the civic society 
and uh, yeah this is our mission and uh, started with previous year once again after the full-scale invasion of russia to ukraine we start to help uh, recruit people to the armed forces of ukraine this is also very unique uh, approach and very unique um, case because this is like official army and we as a private initiative on volunteer basis of course we help this to do uh, we engage people to serve in our forces in different positions starting with uh, troops uh, on the front line uh, starting with troops um, in artillery units uh, in marine in um, and and finishing with uh, working um, more um, management things, logistics, uh, procurement, uh, and so on. So all the vacancies that needs in uh, armed forces, we help to do uh, this search, recruiting, and at the moment we work with more than 60 different units, brigades, and we recruited at least uh, 1,000 soldiers. Uh, but counting and we do not actually know the exact number because it's um, hard to count the exact number during the full-scale invasion active uh, military actions so this is not the the focus for us uh, to count but to give this uh, volunteers yeah Wow, this is uh, very impressive. Uh, I was very personally impressed when I saw this uh, at LinkedIn about you. And as you said, you work with the armed forces of Ukraine, and this is a very noble uh, mission to have. How I'm curious, how did you get involved? And maybe you can share something interesting or specific about that. Uh, we have a lot of connections in different state bodies and different uh, social uh, civic organizations and a lot of uh, representatives from those entities our employers they uh, of course mobilized to armed forces previous year and they knew us and they understood that we could help them with uh, some specific um, tasks for uh, finding something somebody uh, who they needed to their units and they started to address this uh, request to us uh, me i also joined the armed forces uh, on the next day of the full-scale invasion in february on the 25th of february in, uh, previous year 2022 and uh, i was uh, like doing a lot of different uh, things inside until the middle of june and then i saw that more and more um, military units uh, addressed us such a requests and then I um, made some research, uh, talked to different people and understood, find out that um, we have this huge community, uh, Lobix, we have this huge community of um, people who really wanted to work, as we name it, um, sector of changes in NGOs and state reformers and independent media before this full-scale invasion. And we understood that this uh, part of uh, community, they also uh, not indifferent uh, during the full-scale war and they also uh, wanted to be useful. And uh, m most of them, they know how to build processes from the zero with really uh, very few resources, for example, reformers or uh, people who could develop the organization civil sector from the um, like zero level, they also have this capacities, this uh, experience and uh, army. Mm, this is the place where all of these um, strenches uh, could be very useful. And we decided to involve and engage such people to, to serve in armed forces, to build the processes, to be very useful, helpful, to work on the victory. We got the first case when uh, such a reformer from government sector um, came to uh, uh, to one brigade and worked in the military back office. And uh, during like two months, he provided a lot of uh, new 
weapon, a lot of uh, fundraising he made, and a lot of different other solutions with logistics, and the processes building, and so on. And uh, his uh, commander of the brigade, he even gave us feedback that like, it was amazing experience, and if each brigade will have such a um, strong um, officers, uh, it would be much more um, like strengthful for army in general. And we decided why we do not do this for all of the military units in armed forces of Ukraine. And we started to do this in proactive way. So now we have, uh, as you know, like in um, um, Soviet system of uh, recruiting uh, to armed forces. And still, we have the same approach, uh, like on official level. Uh, we have such a like military recruiting not centers, but they like uh, this. Uh, how to say this? Offices. You just need to come to that office, and uh, you never know uh, where you will get after you came. Like to which unit exactly on what position. This is uh, only about your luck. We do another approach. We have like back and see posted from exact uh, military unit, exact brigade, and we show for what position they are looking for uh, new buys. So we show what responsibilities you will have. We show the requirements and even conditions of service. So people apply for exact position to exact unit and they control all of the process what they will have to do inside the army and of course we guarantee that we will never like um, share this information with the other units or these military recruiting offices from soviet uh, times and people trust us because we have one story uh, on the market and uh, they use this tool because our tool because they control the process they control what they will do in army and this is very important because this about the risk to be injured or to, to die this is the war and for example somebody are ready to be a radio technician and uh, provide some uh, some network uh, distribution inside the army but not to be with the gun on the front line uh, in the trenches so that's why they could pick the position where they will be more useful and ready to serve this is more smart than anybody could do what they do not want to do but what decide uh, they need to do another person who did not even evaluate their strengths or weaknesses and so on and of course they will so at the moment yeah we do such an approach uh, we provide such, a, such an approach with uh, 60 plus um, military units we had more than 16,000 application and uh, we are going further we know how to develop this uh, in even more and more volumes and we do believe that uh, official army even could um, obtain such an approach and provide this in official level we help them to do that at the moment and advocate for these changes because this this is much more smarter we do believe and uh, this modernization could help us to win the war to save lives of course we should not destroy the soviet mechanism of uh, engaging people into the army we would better to advocate to build the alternative mechanism and uh, they should uh, both uh, run yeah help each other yeah help each other Wow, yeah, this is, again, this is very impressive, I think. Uh, Try to do our best. Vladislav, uh, it, it's very interesting uh, to know more about you and what inspired you personally to start your own business and what was the process like? Maybe you can share more about yourself. I was, uh, when I was uh, student in university, I do believe that it was first time I um, 
thought about some business in uh, human resources uh, sphere. Uh, why? Uh, I, I'm not actually um, uh, remember exactly, but I do believe that idea that, you know, I, I am, I finished a graduate economics from uh, National University of Kiev Mahio Academy. And uh, if uh, our listeners and uh, uh, they know about the like general theory of economics, we have like two um, general c- capitals in the world, like labor capital and finance capital. So, and th- th- these two capitals like, like run to like, processes uh, in each project so you, you need to have both of them but if you will only have for example finance capital you could like put the money on the table and uh, without uh, people uh, this money will lay on the table and nothing will do but again if you will have people but with no funds still you could do something on, on like zero budget and uh, especially in the civil society sector this a lot of different useful things uh, with zero budget could be provided. So uh, maybe first of all, it was from that that times I thought about such a business, and uh, I worked into international company. Uh, then uh, I dreamed about some um, some career in international uh, business. But and even provided some innovations. I, I remember in 2011, I offered to my company to do some optimization with uh, developing a software uh, that optimized work of uh, hundreds of people for like thousands of hours, and they even gave me. Um, uh, how to say extra money? I, I remember it was uh, five hundred dollars for such an innovation, and uh, but they did not make me um, uh, go further on the on on the career. Uh, like management uh, uh, decided not to give new opportunities. This is like a very common a strategy of human resources development in international companies. So. I, I was uh, dismoraled by that and uh, started to watch uh, to another opportunities. I uh, visited several or maybe two or three another interviews uh, in other international companies and understood that everywhere almost the same uh, perspective for me. And in that time, it was 2013, I decided to do something uh, something by my own it was first idea was a taxi application such as uber but another thing and uh, yeah it was before the revolution of dignity it was very hard to launch such a business i was uh, without no experience uh, in like launching startups or projects i had very low um, uh, social capital, and it was really very hard. But then uh, Revolution of Dignity happened. Uh, I was an active um, mem- like participator, activist, uh, and uh, in the f- end of that, uh, I-, I finished with a new NGO that was very important for the revolution at all, and we transformed that NGO named OPIR, to um, another um, mission to observe the um, elections and verify the results because we believed that it was very important after the revolution. Still also, actually, uh, OPER still operates and we, uh, at the moment, we work on uh, provision of armed forces uh, with equipment and uh, humanitarian aid uh, for uh, civil um society uh, civilians in um, the occupied territories and uh, territories close to frontline 
Uh, and actually, I also want to admit that we only fundraise from uh, the abroad because we understand that uh, donation market inside the Ukraine spreads, the donation pie spread uh, among the huge foundations that do also a lot of uh, uh, important work, but it's better to engage new funds from abroad. So um, after that, after after the um, revolution of dignity, I, I think in one and half a year, I, I, I find out that all of my uh, money they finished, and I need to do something. I m- met my uh, met a friend who was um, uh, who had his uh, design bureau. An architectural bureau and he invited me to be a partner it was a story for one year and after that i uh, started to develop lobby x the first idea why it happened uh, was because i saw that um, facebook as a social media became very popular in ukrainian uh, society and um a lot of discussions uh, were over there, a lot of new users, and also uh, we banned Vkontakte. Uh, it was also very popular before the, actually Russia started the war in, in 2014. So after that, in 2015, if, if I'm not mistaken, we banned Vkontakte and a lot of new users came to Facebook. And Facebook like really became very popular and this ecosystem was very, uh, like useful for uh, looking for um, teammates, uh, different business owners posted their posts about vacancies, and uh, it started to work. Like people, for example, recommended uh, candidates by tagging them in comments. People shared this post to their pages, and they saw that and. Uh, um, I understood that if, for example, you do not know who is the owner of the exact company, you will never saw this vacancy because you are not subscribed, you are not, you are not following this person. If you are not even following this company or Facebook algorithms uh, did not show you this uh, post with vacancy, you will never uh, even uh, will know about this opportunity. And I decided to collect all of these uh, advertisements of vacancies in one place. I created the page of Lobbyx in Facebook and started to collect all of these vacancies. What I uh, saw in Facebook um, timeline uh, in one place, I, I knew a lot of different interesting uh, personalities and companies due to my another activity uh, connected with TEDx uh, Kiev. And that's why it was like network for me that like generates uh, vacancies, I started to do that. And it was like the beginning of the lobbyists of the business. Uh, nobody did that before. Nobody um, collect vacancies in one place in social media. In the future, the Telegram became very popular in Ukraine. Uh, we did not do um, vacancy posting in Telegram for a long time because of the... Um, affiliation with Russia, with Pavel Durov, but when it was um, obvious that Telegram uh, became like absolute uh, messenger, we we had to, uh, to take this and also to come to Telegram. So I could speak more. But wow, this is the very, beginning. So it's very interesting. I, I can listen to more for sure. Uh, yeah, I saw your uh, le- latency on TEDx. So how did that happen? Maybe you can like quickly share it because it's very interesting. I, I think this is uh, you are the f- one, the first, right, in Ukraine? No, 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 no. no. Okay. Uh, yeah, TEDx Kiev in Ukraine uh, since 2009 when the program of TEDx uh, was launched by TED. Um, I came to the team in 2012. Actually, I don't remember exactly how I uh, came to the team. I, I remember that I was a volunteer on the first year of conference in 2012, but how I, it happened that I joined, uh, I don't remember. I have only the one version. It was my 
buddy from university who after the lessons was going to uh, volunteers engagement event of TEDx Kiev and he uh, said me if I'm not mistaken like he said no, let, let's go with me uh, I asked him what is this he uh, he answered me that like you did not know what is that I said I don't know he said me that come on guy it's very cool let's go so uh, thanks for that for that uh, body from my university mm -hmm. uh, yeah I, I I came as a volunteer it was like you know what volunteers do on events everything hard work uh, then um, somebody from management team like uh, evaluated me uh, and they invited me to the core team I was responsible and the next year I was um, uh, supporting the direction of partnership and fundraising on the another year I um, was already the leader of uh, fundraising and partnership and uh, in 2015 after revolution of dignity uh, in even 14 and in 15 officially I became uh, team leader and licensee of TEDx Kiev and still now I'm licensee we are looking for new buys and uh, new fresh blood to the team new leaders because uh, after the full invasion a full-scale invasion it's very hard to um, do uh, same volumes high quality level activities on volunteer basis because TEDx is only volunteer organization uh, due to the license and uh, we had more than 40 team members and of course uh, a lot of them started volunteer directly for military humanitarian aid so that's why it's much more harder to do provide educational uh, projects but we do now we more focus on international cooperation we um, spread uh, stories and ideas were spreading from Ukraine on international um, TEDx events other TEDx events we would train our speakers from Ukraine with amazing, unbelievable stories that happened after the full-scale invasion and sent them to abroad to speak, to talk to global audiences. And this works. It's like international advocacy, international diplomacy from our side. This is what we think very important in the moment and we focus on that. Wow, <laughs> this is great. Uh... Again, inspiring. Uh, okay, uh, and is there anything you are looking for right now? Yeah, a lot of different requests. Uh, if our listeners uh, could help on this, I, I would be very happy. First of all, uh, we are very open for volunteer synthetic ski team. We open to spread the word and uh, to have more opportunities for our speakers abroad and TEDx. Uh, stages so if you are TEDxer let us know if you're interested in this uh, what else we uh, of course at SwabeX we we will be very happy to have uh, new clients from abroad in Ukraine uh, as much as we can have commercial um, employers uh, then more we could help for free for NGOs state bodies and uh, armed forces this is the exact collaboration so if you want to contribute in this way uh, welcome if also welcome for uh, recruiters for sources uh, this is also very important to grow the team to uh, be more uh, capable to make more uh, successful hires what what else we're looking for ambassadors uh, abroad um, in Oper, uh, who will help us to engage uh, new funds uh, to provide projects of humanitarian aid or provision to armed forces. This is very simple activities uh, connected with only social media and uh, we are looking for active uh, civilians uh, abroad uh, who have maybe even very small uh, social uh, capital in the social media but are ready to invest, I don't know, half of uh, hour 
to to help Ukraine uh, to have some uh, new fundraising from abroad. And uh, the very last thing um, I do at the moment, we launched with another team a new educational um, project focused on um, teenagers from villages and small cities of Ukraine. We have mostly online educational process for them, but also with offline uh, interactions. This is the pilot year and uh, we will have uh, only 500 students uh, on the first year. But the main idea is that we will develop their understanding of how this world operates, how how this um, uh, world uh, runs in different spheres. We have 12 different spheres, main spheres that we believe um, contain uh, current world, starting with, for example, um, personal health, uh, relationships. This is one direction. Another one, the relationships. Another, for example, business. Another, economy. Another, education and science. Another, culture. Another, art. Another, uh, technologies and innovations, media and uh, information. Also, we have military as another direction. We believe this very important even in Ukraine. So, uh, this will um, develop the understanding of how each of the sphere works from the elementary understanding to complex but basic understanding. We do not want to dive deep because this is teenagers. They, it's better to understand in basic level but in complex everything. It will help for sure these uh, uh, students to um, provide more quality decisions in their own lives. And of course, this will um, upgrade, I think, uh, capacities and strengths for the society in general. We will have huge challenge in Ukraine during the war after even the victory because of the 7 million people who left Ukraine, uh, 7 million people of um, people who was uh, targeted by um, armed forces of Russia and they lost their homes and now they uh, have uh, new homes abroad. Uh, this is really very sad and I want to believe that most of them will come back but uh, it seems that it will not be such an easy task to bring them back to Ukraine. And um, generally as labor market, of course, another part of the challenge that a lot of people are dying in armed forces or civilians dying by Russian missiles in their peaceful homes. Uh, but this will make us in future a very huge challenge how to provide the economy and uh, the state bodies with enough uh, number of uh, high quality people. And that's why we should invest into youngsters, into their uh, capacities and to their understanding on, on how this world is uh, running on and uh, I believe that will help us to to reflect on this challenge and uh, of course uh, another thing I should admit why we decided and select uh, uh, children from villages and countryside that's because of we know in Ukraine that uh, this is huge um, difference on the opportunities that we have in big cities such as Kiev, Lviv and villages for example and of course this difference in these opportunities um, reflects in the world view and this understanding of the world of, uh, in this um, students and these children that's why w we came over there to make more value for them and uh, in general in cumulative effect it will be very uh, I think um, effective yeah what so is, what is the name of the project 
in in the Ukrainian, it's sminotvorci. In English, change makers. We believe that these uh, children will be a change makers. And yeah, in this way, what we are looking for, we are looking uh, among Ukrainians. Um, people who also are not indifferent in this uh, topic and they want to contribute as a um, guest speaker, as a lecturer, as a um, developer of uh, educational course uh, on one of these 12 different spheres. We are looking for entrepreneurs who are ready to um, open the doors of their companies for graduates for, of this program to come and to be a trainee in the organization. We open for partnerships when companies we have a lot of different opportunities to, to create partnerships. And uh, of course, we are open for uh, raising uh, opportunities for any other donations from private sector or uh, some foundations. So this is not very cheap because of the uh, volumes. Only on the first year it will be about 500 students, but uh, in the second year we will have thousand and then more and more. As much as we could educate, as much as we could help uh, to develop as more Ukrainians and uh, our society will be stronger. So we aim on as much as we could. Okay, great. Uh, okay, and the, the last question. How can people uh, find you, like your website or in social media? Yeah, I believe in each of my social media, I had each of my project uh, mentioned. Uh, so you can find me in any social media you could find then uh, social media pages of all of these projects message us in any way on our websites on our emails in direct messages in any social media and we will of course uh, answer you and uh, collaborate with you okay okay Vladislav it was uh, nice uh, talking to you today thanks Irina for uh, your attention and your time and this interview it was a great pleasure for me